Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSE. This video is about Physics Unit 1, Physical Quantities and Measurement Techniques, covering the use of ruler and measuring cylinders, measuring time intervals, scalar versus vector quantity, and finally, resultant force. Rulers can be used to measure small distances from millimeters to meter. This is an example question to calculate the diameter of one ball. Step 1 is to measure the length of 5 balls, and we can do that by minusing 6.9 cm with 2.1 cm. And step 2 would be to divide the total length differences by 5, giving you 0.96 cm. When measuring small lengths, the unit that we would use is centimeters. For instance, if you were asked to name an instrument that would be suitable to take these measurements, which are in meters, you will use a meter ruler or a measuring tape, which is more appropriate for a larger distances compared to a regular ruler. Measuring cylinders can be used to measure the volume of liquids. By measuring the change in volume, a measuring cylinder can be used to find the volume of an irregular shape. When measuring volume, read the measurements at eye level below the meniscus to avoid parallax error. Clocks, stop clocks, or stopwatch can be used to measure time intervals. Let's see an example here. Calculate how long it took the runner to complete a lap. Give your answers in seconds. You have the reading for the start of lap and the end of lap given. 55.10 seconds and 1 minute 45.10 seconds, which converted into seconds would give you a value of 105.10 seconds. For the interval of one lap, you could just minus the final lap with the initial lap giving you 50 seconds. Do not forget your units. Scalar versus Vector All quantities can be one of two types, a scalar quantity or a vector quantity. Scalar quantities only have a magnitude, whereas vectors have both magnitude and direction. For example, speed is a scalar since it is a quantity that has only magnitude without a direction. A woman is running at a speed of 5 meters per second. 5 meters per second here is your magnitude. And velocity is a vector since it is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. A woman is running at a speed of 5 meters per second to the right. 5 meters per second is your magnitude and to the right is the direction. Based on your syllabus specification, these are the following quantities of scalar and vector that you should know of. Resultant force. Vectors can be represented by an arrow. The arrow head indicates the direction, and the length represents the magnitude. For instance, if I had an object being pulled in opposite directions with different forces, the object would move in the direction with the stronger pull. We call this resultant force. The resultant force here is 2 newtons to the right. However, it gets a little bit more complicated when forces are applied on the objects like this. The resultant force here will be in the middle, but we need to dive deeper into calculating the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. Let's look into an example from a past year question from May-June 2023. A swimmer starts at point P and swims at a constant speed of 0.72 meters per second, relative to the water and at right angles to the current. Determine, relative to the river bank, both the magnitude and direction of the swimmer's velocity. Alright, so we are going to learn two methods to approach this question. Over here, the question did not mention to you whether you should be drawing a vector diagram or to calculate, but always pay attention to the question and follow the method that is being asked in the question. For instance, this question did not mention anything, so we could either draw a vector diagram to find the magnitude and direction or calculate the magnitude and direction. Let's try out both the methods for this question. We know that the swimmer starts from point P and swims at a direction at 90 degree angle to the current like this. And the speed of the swimmer was 0.72 meters per second. So if I were to sketch it, it would look like this. In order to find the magnitude and the direction, you have to draw out your vector to scale. So for this question, we will use a scale of 0.1 meters per second to 1 centimeters. 
So for 0.72 meters per second, the scale here would be 7.2 centimeters. And next, for the current 0.5 meters per second, your length of vector would be at 5.4 centimeters, like this. The next step here would be to complete the triangle. Make sure everything is at right angle and draw a diagonal length from corner to corner and you will get your resultant force like this. Since you have drawn this according to scale, you can measure the length of your resultant force. I have obtained a value here of 9 cm. According to your scale of 0.1 meters per second to 1 cm, the magnitude of the swimmer would be 0.9 meters per second. Now we're left with finding the direction of the swimmer's velocity. This is the direction of the swimmer, and this is the current flow that is pushing the swimmer from right to left. So to find the direction, we are going to look for the angle over here. To do this, place your protector accordingly and you will get an angle approximately 53 degree here. Now let's apply the second method and see if we get a magnitude of 0.9 meters per second and 53 degrees. In this method, a diagram is still essential but it does not need to be exactly to scale. The diagram can take the form of a sketch as long as the resultant component and sides are clearly labelled like this. Use Pythagoras theorem to find the resultant vector, which is 0.9 meters per second, which is similar from method 1. Next. To find the direction of the swimmer's velocity, you need to find at which angle the swimmer moves. Since the current is pushing him to the left and this is your resultant force, this is the angle that you're looking for. We can use Soka Tua to remember how to apply sines and cosines to resolve the sides of a triangle. The opposite is 0.72 and the adjacent is 0.54. So we can use 10 to resolve the side of this angle you will get an angle of approximately 53 degrees, which is similar as method 1 again. So remember that there are two methods to calculate resultant force, and both of the methods would give you the same answer. And pay attention to which method the question wants you to find your magnitude and direction. If the question did not mention any of the method above, you may proceed to answer using any one of these to find the magnitude and the direction. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I will be explaining on Unit 2 motion for the next video. Please like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you find this helpful. Thank you. Bye-bye.